Come on, you could do it. Please, Father, may everything fun. Good and happy Purim. We're so glad to be able to celebrate such an awesome holiday because we have to think about the fact yeah, that looks better. Think about the fat husband. Can you close the peekaboo a little bit? It's glaring in my eyes. Thank you. So, today, happy Purim, everyone. And my husband read the Megillah last night on the YouTube channel. And uh, we recorded it. I haven't made time to send it out yet. But if you look on our channel that recently uploaded, you should find it there. And <clears throat> for last night's reading, but my husband will be reading again today, the book of Esther in Hebrew. And that will be uh, on this channel and this video, but at 1.30 New York time. So... With the help of the Almighty, Bezrat Hashem, uh, we're going to have a good class today. So the first and foremost thing to really think about is the study of the book of Esther. Why do we read the book of Esther even? Husband, oh, husband disappeared into a bathroom. Okay. First of all, it's interesting because at this time that we are right now, the terrible October 7th event that we wish never had happened, uh, was an attack on the Jewish people intensely. It was uh, a very big act of anti-Semitism. And basically, in the time of Esther, there was some mega anti-Semitism also. So much so that the, the scriptures in the book of Esther speak about the fact that um, Esther didn't tell the king that she was Jewish. And thank God he took a very uh, strong liking to her. And she became the queen. There's a lot of details in this story, like the fact that Esther was adopted by Mordecai because she lost her parents. And he was like a parent to her. And then at some point, I'm not sure exactly when, when my husband comes back to the class over here, we could ask him all the questions. Um, but bottom line is that she ended up marrying Ahasuerus, uh, who was the king over Persia at that time. It's interesting that Queen Esther comes from the tribe of Benjamin, which is Benjamin in English, and, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> That's also has pertinence. There's a lot of things I wish I would have. Uh, we decided to do this. I'm not sure if it was last night or this morning, just to get in touch with everybody because there's mega snowstorms in many places, especially where we are here. And we had people coming to visit us in the local vicinity, uh, probably Kim would have come, but because we knew there was going to be a mega snowstorm, we didn't invite anybody. And the few people that were already invited, we had to call them back and tell them to join us online because you can't go out and what's going on out there. So, the Book of Esther comes from Shushan, and I have a little booklet, I have a couple of 
uh, things on on the Book of Esther, literature, written literature. This one my husband even gave me, if I can find where it is. He gave it to, oh, here it is. And it looks like that. I don't know if you can see it. But, and then I have this one. It's from Art Scroll on... Uh, the Family Megillah, the Book of Esther. So maybe we'll read what my husband gave first because this, to celebrate Purim, is a mitzvot, a biblical command, to listen to the Megillah. Megillah Esther is Esther's and Mordecai's first-hand narrative of Haman's plot and how he was miraculously vanquished. We listened to the Megillah twice, once last night, and the second one will be this afternoon. Um, my husband will come in around 1.30 New York time, and he will take over reading the Megillah in Hebrew for the second time of Purim. Try not to miss a word. It's an interactive event. When Haman's name is mentioned, usually people have groggers, er, 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 or they say boo, which is what I did last night <coughs> for the reading every time Haman's name is mentioned. Any type of noisemaker qualifies. And stamp your feet to drown out the sound of that evil name. Many times we say, blah, and we, uh, with the feet, you know. Anyway, we eat a festive meal during the daytime on Sunday, March 24th, probably after this, uh, after the reading of the Megillah. Um, we celebrate with a festive and joyous meal. Traditional foods, including soups and kreplach, it's like a Shabbos meal. Stuffed dumplings, fruits, nut-filled hamantashen, which we have some miraculously I had kept in the freezer. <coughs> hamantashen are triang triangular um, little cakes, which they call Haman's ears. <laughs> the hidden... Uh, fillings in both foods remind us of God's hidden, that God Almighty, HaKadosh Baruch who is hidden, yet ever present, involved in the Purim episode. In fact, the name of Almighty God is not mentioned even once in Megillus Esther, whether you get it from your Tanakh or you get it from any Bible, the book of Esther is there, and God's name is not mentioned. We send gifts of food. Purim is a time of celebration of Jewish unity and friendship. We send packages containing at least two different kinds of ready-to-eat foods. Could you call Jennifer? She didn't... She didn't come in. I, I tried to text them, see if she'll answer. These gifts, Mishloach Manot, are often delivered by a child or friend, expanding the circle of joy. Give to the poor. Place these coins in the ark. So because it, uh, the last parsha, I believe it was, was talking about giving the coins to the building of the Beit HaMikdash. What's that? Hmm. Okay, giving tzedakah or charity. 
a year-round obligation is a is particularly oh by the way those two coins that were given to the Beit HaMikdash um, they say you're supposed to use a half dollar but if you don't have it I see here taped in this little booklet that my my husband lent me for the class it has two quarters taped there place these coins in the ark so Giving tzedakah or charity a year-round obligation is a particularly special mitzvah on Purim. Give charity at the least two needy individuals on Purim day, ideally by giving directly to the person. If this is not possible, place at least two coins into two different charity Boxes, okay, and that's how that one ends. So, if you don't have common caution, imagine you can take any cake and cut squares, and by cutting not squares, triangles, uh, we can say may these be as though they were common caution, where there's a will, there's a way, right? <laughs> Please call Jennifer. Okay, so we are now going to the book called The Family Megillah, which is the book from Art Scroll on the Book of Esther. So it has the reading of the Megillah in English, and it has little commentaries along the sides. I don't know how far I'm going to get as far as reading the whole book, but we'll try. Maybe there are some sections we can jump over. We'll see. So let's give a general idea of what the Book of Esther is about before we start reading. And we, we find that um, the queen, which was Vahi at that time, uh, her husband, the king, asked her to come in her birthday suit before everybody for a celebration that they were having. And she had caught like a leprosy, a skin disease, and she would be embarrassed to come out like that. So she refused to come to the king in her birthday suit. And so the story goes on that he didn't understand or know why she did that. And he had her, uh, I don't know if she ran away or if she was slain. Husband, what happened to Vashti? She was killed or she ran away? One opinion is she was killed. Another opinion is that she was exiled. Okay. Was there's two different opinions. You know where there's 10 rabbis is 11 opinions. Did she answer, husband? Her daughter answered and she's going to get her deep. Oh, good. There's Jennifer. Okay. Very successful. Very Thank good. you. Okay. Welcome, Jennifer. Happy Purim. We're kind of uh, verbally going over the book of Esther. I have the book of Esther here um, by Art Scroll. It's a paperback that I use every year. But I wanted to give people a general understanding an idea of what the book of Esther is about. We, we said in the beginning of the class, please go back uh, after class and see the beginning because it will explain to you the different mitzvahs we have to do. And uh, I wanted to have you call me after class because I want to find out, I want to say something and I want to know how I can do that. Uh, anyway, Let's continue on here. So, Vashti, one, there were, where there's 10 uh, rabbis, 11 opinions. Oh, someone else came in. Welcome, welcome, whoever came in. And so, we were discussing the book of Esther. And my husband explained to me that there was two different opinions on what happened to Vashti. Vashti, um, one opinion says that she was exiled from Shushan 
and the other opinion says she, she was murdered or killed by her husband for refusing to come out in her birthday suit. So, she was not a very holy woman no matter what, right? And the reason she wouldn't come out is because she had gotten something like leprosy, and so she was embarrassed. So what does the commentary have to say here? The 20th century has given a new relevance not only to the genocidal intention of Haman, but to his method of pursuing it. And Haman was an anti-Semite, and he hated the Jewish people, like we're seeing in the world today. And October 7th is very much like what Haman was trying to do when he built the gallows to kill uh, Mordecai and Esther. And the whole thing turned around on him. Uh, and he was killed with his sons on those same things he built to kill Mordecai. So let's read a little over here. Familiar of Haman's arguments to gain al uh acquaintance. As given briefly in the book of Esther from chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, and everybody has this book of Esther in their Tanakh or their Bible. You can look up the book of Esther if you want to follow along. And amplified by the Talmudic sages. Haman's diet, uh, diatribe has been echoed by anti-Semites throughout the ages. Jewish people are separatists, elitists, racist. <laughs> they hold themselves apart from all other people of the realm. They will not blend into the culture or the other religions because those are biblical commands for Jewish people. We have different holidays. We eat different kosher foods. We do everything different than the rest of the world. And it's by our upkeep of those Torah mitzvahs and biblical commands that it maintains and sustains a certain level of righteousness in this world. They are damaging to the unity of the kingdom of the true God. Why should the king tolerate their div diversive presence? Is it worth the price? Would not the world be better served if this nuisance, this friendless nation, were removed from their midst? This is how they think. And finally, the state will derive an immense economic benefit from the disappearance of the pariah people. Look at how awful that's written like that. That's how they think. So, let's continue reading here. Haman's, okay, I read that already. So sophisticated a discourse is, ju is justify such a foul end, but it should not surprise anyone. Throughout our history, we have been similarly maligned, and our oppressors have indignantly insisted that they were forced to take heroic measures to defend themselves against little Israel. The laws of the Third Reich were classified, were, were carefully phrased in terms that deceived many a native observer into believing that a tormented nation called Persia, Spain, Russia, Germany, or the United Nations was merely seeking to protect themselves 
from an internal cancer, Chas Vashon. What ignited Haman's anger? There are two answers. The obvious one and the true one. The obvious one was Mordechai's obstinacy. A proud Jew that he was, Mordechai refused to bow to Haman, who we don't bow to any human being, and we don't observe or acknowledge any false gods, Baruch Hashem. A proud Jew that he was, Mordechai refused to bow to Haman, who, as tradition teaches, brazenly uh, paraded with an image of this idol dangling from his neck. Mordechai insisted that there had to be at least one Jewish person who would not sacrifice dignity on the altar of expediency. And would Haman love Israel any more if even Mordechai's knees scraped the ground in obedience to his pagan deity? The in and so this hideous Haman sought revenge in the annihilation not only of Mordechai, but of his people, the pundits of the time sure revealed in the charge that the stiff-necked Mordecai was to blame for Israel's catastrophe. But as the sages teach, that was not the true reason for the destruction that threatened Israel. Nine years earlier, the Jews had ignored the warnings of Mordechai and his fellow sages not to indulge in forbidden foods and act at the lavish feast of al Hashverosh, which was a, a Gentile activity. Let Jews be loyal to their government, yes, but let them not set aside their Torah to do so for anyone. The people understand that that abstinence, and he would accuse them of disloyalty or harboring secret hopes and planning conspiracies to return to Eretz Israel. If their loyalties were to Jerusalem rather than Shushan, they would be branded traitors, and the punishment for treason is. Dare we agonize a paranoid, insecure monarch like al Hashverish? Dare we place our nation's survival at risk by agonizing a king whose, who whose comprises are notorious? And when al Hashverish ordered the execution of his beloved Queen Vashti simply because she refused to disgrace herself publicly to satisfy his whim, didn't that prove that we were wise and right not to provoke his anger? On the divine scales, however, Mordecai's judgment was right the Jews do not survive by committing spiritual suicide. For if a Jew lacks pride in their Jewishness, by what virtue do they derive, no, by what virtue do they deserve the right to preserve their separate identity? The nation had participated in its own downfall by an act of cowardly faithfulness, only by a, a, a parallel act of communal courage could it save itself. Mordecai began the process by defying Haman's decree to bow. 
His knee would not bend, and he would not grovel. Then came Esther's turn. Unknown to King Ahasuerus or his victory or his viceroy Haman, Queen Esther was a Jew, and Mordecai demanded that she intercede with the king. She hesitated because she could be killed for entering into the king's presence without being invited. Logic dictated that she wait for a more opportune moment to plead with Alchashverosh. And that's in the book of Esther from chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. But Mordechai would not accept her argument. Could it be that she was somewhat complacent because she enjoyed the safety of and security of the throne? After all, Alchashverosh had not the slightest suspicion that his beloved new queen was a member of the race that he had consigned to the to the pure of history. Pyre, P-Y-R-E, of history? Would she have been so rational if she had been in a much... Uh, closer place of jeopardy as her brethren. Mordecai replied harshly to Esther, Do not imagine that you will be able to escape the king's palace any more than the rest of the Jews. For if you persist in keeping silent at this time, like this, relief and deliverance will come to the Jews from some other place while you and your father's house would perish. That's Mordechai talking to Esther if she doesn't go and talk to Alhashverish about all this. And who knows whether it was justice for such a time as this that you attained the royal position. Chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 of the book of Esther. Everybody who has a Bible in their home or a Tanakh has the book of Esther in it. If you want to follow along with me. A new insight into communal responsibility to help one's fellow uh, Jews in a privilege, not a core. The nation will always survive somehow, but the one who spurns it entreaties themselves to be doomed. And furthermore, no matter how exalted someone's position or lavish fortune, let them always regard it as but a means to serve the common good and the Almighty. Now Esther knew why she had been raised to the throne to save her to save her people. Hmm. And if she failed to do so, she might well be condemning herself to oblivion, while another path to salvation would surely open for the righteous Jewish people. Esther was more than equal to the, to the challenge. And her bravery, dedication, and cunning precipitation precipitated a swiftly moving series of events that brought new glory to her people and that doomed Haman. But even this is not primarily is not the primary lesson of Purim. Amazingly. God Almighty's name does not appear in the Megillah, and precisely that it is lessened. God's ways are not ways that are obvious all the time, but his miracles are most often not uh, illuminated by lightning nor punctuated by thunder. And the concisely written 
167 verse of Megillah. No seas split, no heavens roar, no dry bones come to life, but in the truest sense of the greatest of all, miracles are narrated in the Purim story. It is the miracle of of gain and control of events. With the period of Esther and Mordecai, a new emphasis was added to the Jewish history. We had to find God's hand, not in the splitting of the sea or heavenly fire, but in everyday events. The story of the Megillah spanned nine years and only at the very end did the pieces of God's jigsaw puzzle begin coming together, suddenly widely separate links began to move together to form a chain and widely separate chains joined to become an anchor upon which Jewish survival was secured. Maybe you give a call to Rabbits and Husby. See what happens. And simple logic. Right, but, but the invitation means something. And simple logic turns turned turned out to be wrong. Mordechai had been right all along in not participating in Al Hashverish orgy and not bowing to his false god that Haman had. One set of links the execution of Vashti, which led to the coronation of Esther. Because Esther was queen, she was in a position to approach the king to save her people, and she could lull Haman into complacency by inviting him to her private banquet another set of links. Big Thana and Teresh plotted to kill Alheshverish. Because Esther had secured a royal appointment for Mordecai, he was positioned to overhear them and report the scheme to Esther. She told the king she, she told the king of Mordecai's loyalty, and it was inscribed in the royal chronicle, and there to lay for, uh, forgotten until the fa that faithful night when God disturbed the king's sleep. A third set of links. The king promoted Haman, and everyone was required to bow to him, but Mordecai refused. Assured of his power and influence, even with the queen, Haman built gallows and sought royal permission to hang Mordecai. Just when Alhashverish learned that it was Mordecai who had once saved his life. When the appropriate climatic time arrived, the pieces of God's jigsaw puzzle came together and formed the destruction of Haman and most of Mal Amalek. So in today's world, the Houthis and Iran are Amalekites. And they're saying Haman and, the, and most of the Amalekites and the salvation for the Jews, which any day now, as it's written in the book of Proverbs, as God payback belongs to Almighty God, he will pay back those people for October 7th. Amen, King Yehirat's son. The events of those ancient days determine the mode of the Purim's annual observance. The Megillah is red morning and evening last night and today as soon as my class ends my husband will come in with the reading of the megillah 
in this video, and all Jews are required to hear it. Its lesson is too important to be restricted only to those who normally attend the synagogue regularly. Even people who are unable to hear the public reading should have it read for them from a ritually valid Megillah scroll. When, when we read the Megillah, however, let us remember the eternal lesson beneath the rousing story. The reading from last night was recorded on our YouTube channel. I haven't had time to send it out yet, but with the help of the Almighty, I will get both of them sent out today's and yesterday's. The celebration of Purim is, a un is unique among Jewish festivals. Purim is celebrated with the with an excess of food, drink, and friv and frivolity, because we are making an event when our physical lives were threatened. Unlike other festivals that co uh, commemorate primarily spiritual dangers and salvation, furthermore. Purim is a holiday of Jewish fellowship as well. And what, is, what did it say when there was a convert that went to the rabbi and said, teach me the whole Torah while I stand on one foot. And what did the rabbi answer him? Love your fellow as you love yourself. That's the whole Torah. And so... We have to be in control of us, not our emotions, not our thoughts, but the Torah be our main will for all things in our life. Therefore, we are loving and serving the Almighty. It is our job to take our free will and make it, make it with the stubbornness God gave us. What did he call us? He called us a a, a stiff-necked people, and we are stiff-necked, hard-headed for the sole purpose of doing the will of Almighty God. Amen, King Hirot son. So let's continue now a little bit. There's very little left. Further, furthermore, Purim is a holiday of Jewish fellowship as well, because among the tools that forge the miracle were a sense of communal responsibility, a sense of concern for the plight of every Jew. So the requirements of the day include gifts to friends and to the poor, for indeed we are one and we must take positive steps to remain with our oneness to each other. As Sepharis Emmis, which is a worldly renowned commentator, taught that Purim is indeed a festival aimed primarily at Jews without their temple, for it shows us how to live and survive in a hostile environment where not only survival is in question, but even Almighty God's presence the Shekhinah seems to be absent or hidden. Thanks to Purim, we feel more secure about survival and we can see how Almighty God, His hand, God's hand, even where He is invisible, is spiritually visible. And what I just read you was from Rabbi Nossen uh, Shechemen. Okay. Now, let's go on. Oh, there's, what is this? Before the reading of the Megillah, the reader recites. So I'm going to recite and you say amen. So when my husband does it, if you didn't catch it or you didn't understand it, that you'll know what you were doing. Blessed are you, Hashem, Almighty God, King of the universe, who sanctified us 
with his commandments and has commanded us regarding the reading of the Megillah. Amen, King Herod's son. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has sought, who has wrought miracles for our forefathers in those days and that season. Amen, King Herod's son. Blessed are you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be he, King of the universe, who has kept us alive, sustained us, and brought us to this season. Amen, King Herod's son. If you've said amen to each of those brachas, uh, when my husband begins to read, you made those brachas. If you didn't catch his, you can say amen to his as well. So let's read a little commentary here as we read the, the uh, beginning of it. The Feast of Auhashverosh, successor to Cyrus towards the end of the seven, 70 years of the Babylonian exile, BCE, in the third year, 3395 from creation. According to his erroneous calculation, the 70th year of the Jews' exile had passed. Thus, the prophet who had foretold the exile's end after 70 years, and Alhashveres rejoiced in this frustration of Jewish hope. He had completed the building of his magnificent throne, and he was finally secure in his reign. He took Vashti as his queen, and Vash it was Vashti that was royalty, not him, and he became royalty because he married her. And then what does he do? He kills her. What an idiot. Thus the causes for such a lavish feast says the Midrash. And the feast of Alheshverish was one of um, disgusting things. The letter He has the numerical value of eight. Eight meaning new beginnings. In the Megillah, the He of the word Or is that white garment is enlarged to imply that that on that climatic day, Alhashverish adorned himself with the eight garments of the high priest. In punishment for this, he suffered the multi multiple evils of the resulting episode of Vashti, her death, and his embarrassment, and subsequent depression. And that is a commentary of al -Kabetz. Vashti refuses the king's summon. Vashti was the daughter of Belshazzar and the granddaughter of Nebuchadnezzar. Wearing the royal crown, she was to wear only the royal crown, unclothed, says the Midrash. Vashti refused, not because of modesty. The reason for her refusal was that God caused leprosy to break out on her and paved the way for her downfall, says the Midrash. Memu Khan's suggestion. Memu Khan is Haman. Why was he called Memu Khan? Because he was destined for destruction, says the Talmud. Okay, I'm reading you commentaries. 
I give you a homework assignment that after class you go back, or while my husband's reading it in Hebrew, you can read it in English. The book of Esther. Vashti is disposed. What I'm doing is giving you more meaning and understanding to what you will be reading. This is all the commentary from the art scroll, um, Megillah. Vashti is disposed. This proposal was favorable in the eyes of the king. He gave the order and they brought in her head on a platter, says Midrash, Vashti's head. Alhashverus seeks a new queen. He remembered the order he had given her to appear unclothed before him and how he refused and how had been wroth with her and put her to death, said Midrash. So, in this verse, there I'm going to read one verse of Torah here, 5 of chapter 2. Shushan the capital, whose name was Mordechai, son of Jair, uh, son of... Uh, son of Kish, a, a bed, who had been exiled from Jerusalem along with the exiles who had been exiled. The commentary reads, this verse is among the four verses said aloud in the synagogue by the congregation during the public reading of the Megillah. Okay. There's a difference of opinion. Esther was her proper name. And Esther was added later, or vice versa. Both names are descriptive of her virtues. Adasa is derived from the Hebrew word myrtle. And Esther from Istahar, as beautiful as the moon, says the Talmud. Having consorted with the king, it would not be proper for them to marry other men. They were required to the harem and remain there for the rest of their lives as concubines. Talking about where Esther went after they they turn all kinds of uh, stuff. You'll read it in the scriptures. To part of the harem, the harem of the king's castle. And to await the possibility of being crowned queen. If the king found no one better. Esther is chosen queen. And the second gathering. Okay. Mordecai foils a plot against the king. He heard some people saying how they were going to kill the king. He overheard them because Mordecai knew all 70 languages. Um, like the rabbis that were in the... Us me. The 70 languages rabbis. What were they called? Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. Thank you. I knew that, but for some reason, I couldn't bring it up in my mind at the moment. Okay. So, uh, he was part of the Sanhedrin. He knew 70 languages. They spoke in their native tongues, those two that were planning to kill the king. But um, Mordechai knew what they were saying. And this comes from Talmud also. Haman is advanced. Haman was a descendant of Agad, king of the Amalekites. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 9. To make it manifest that the homage due to him was an idolatrous character. Haman had the image of an idol fastened to his clothing and around his neck, so that whoever 
bowed down before him, worshipped an idol at the same time. Therefore Mordecai would not bow down or prostrate himself to him. And that's from Midrash. Haman plans the destruction of all the Jewish people. The reaction of Haman to a personal affront is typical of the most uh, bid anti-Semite throughout the ages. Haman slanders the Jews to the king. Haman said that they eat and drink and despise the throne. For if a fly fails, uh, if a fly falls into the Jews' cup, he throws it out, and the fly in the drink and drinks the wine. But if his majesty were to merely touch his cup, he would throw it to the ground and not drink of it, says Talmud. But those are all biblical commands, halacha, and he's giving wrong reasons for them, trying to convince the king that the Jewish people were hateful. The price Haman was ready to pay for the right to exterminate the Jews, 10,000 talents, was 24 million ounces or 750 tons of silver. The king's consent to the destruction of the Jews. And as we go through, we find out that when Esther finally got a hold of the king, that the decree had already been made, that she got another decree issued so that she was able to uh, allow the Jewish people to obtain weapons to defend themselves. And so they did, and they overcame the enemy, Baruch Hashem. Chapter 4 now of the Book of Esther, we're reading commentaries. Mordecai and the Jews mourn. Esther had not yet revealed her origins that she was Jewish, but her interest in Mordecai, who had always inquired about her welfare, was well known throughout the palace. Okay. What does this say here at the end? In the Talmud, he is identified as Daniel. What does this say? Hat, hach, hat, hat, hach, 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 was a great man and Esther's confidant, one who would keep secrets and whom no one would suspect or dare to question about his mission in the Talmud. He, he was identified as Daniel from the book of Daniel. Mordecai asked Esther to intercede. He also gave him a copy of the text of the decree that was distri distributed in Shushan for the destruction of the Jewish people so that he might show it to Esther and inform her and bid her to go to the king to implore him to plead with him. And that's part of what happened as she did and was given permission for the Jewish people to have weapons. Esther agrees to go and summon to the king Esther goes before the king. On the third day of the fast, it was, according to the Talmud, the first day of Passover for them. Esther lays a trap for Haman. The first Hebrew letters of the word, 
Vam. Oh, I really can't read this, but form the holy name of Almighty God. This is one of the several places throughout the Megillah or the scrolls of Esther where God's name is indirectly hinted. It says Kad Ha Ker Kernach. Okay. The first banquet of Esther, she had two banquets. She invited Haman to her banquet. Esther, Esther's ruse worked. When Haman arrived at Esther's first banquet, he was uh, apprehensive of Esther's reason for inviting him. He suspected a connection between the new edict uh, concerning the Jews and his in invitation. Only now, having left the first party at which he was overwhelmed with flattery, was he joyous and confident. He was unprepared, therefore, for the consequences of Esther's next banquet. And that's a commentary from Al- Al Al Cabez. Notice that Haman did not mention to his wife and children that he was angry because of Mordecai's refusal to bow down to him. He thought in he thought it beneath his dignity to admit that such a minor slight could could raffle him. Rather, he claimed that he was angry because Mordecai the Jew was sitting at the king's gate, and he was totally unworthy of such a high honor. And that's another common, world-renowned commentator, Ma'am Loez. We are now in chapter 6 of the book of Esther, and there's no commentaries here. So Mordecai is finally rewarded because the king was woke up in the middle of the night and told him to bring out the, the writings of the Chronicles. And in there it spoke about how Mordecai, so the king uh, put Mordecai on a horse and made Haman walk him through the town where everybody would cheer him on for saving the life of the king. And Haman's humiliation at that point, this is what will be done for the man whom the king desires to honor. And that was Mordecai. And then uh, verse 11 of chapter 6. So Haman took the garments and the horse and dressed Mordecai and had him ride through the city square and proclaimed before him, this is what shall be done to the man whom the king desires to honor. Haman's doom is forecasted. Mordecai, Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman hurried home, despondent and with his head covered. Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends everything. This is scripture I'm reading now that had happened to him and his wise men and his wife. Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will undoubtedly fall before him. While they were still talking with him, the king's chamberlains arrived, and they hurried to bring Haman to the banquet with Esther that she had prepared. Now chapter 7. The second banquet of Esther presents her request, and we're going to read commentary now. It was one of, the, of God's miracles that as disturbed as Alhashverish was, he came to the feast and was cheered by the wine and regained his good cheer to the extent that he was 
prepared to fulfill Esther's every wish. The first king is taken to uh, refer the first king is taken to refer to Almighty God, the second to Al Hashverish. Esther cast her eyes heavenward and said, If I have found favor in your eyes, Almighty God, O Supreme King of my life, and if it pleases you, King Al Hashverish, let my life be granted to me and let my people be rescued out of the hands of the enemy, Targum. We're continuing with uh, the commentary on chapter 7, verse 7. Haman is accused. The king went out to cool off from his anger, part of God's master plan to give Haman the opportunity to incriminate himself even further in the king's absence. We are now on commentary of verse 9, chapter 7. Haman is executed. Our sages ordain that one should always say, Harbona of blessed memory, because it was Harbona, a swift advice that prevented Haman from possibly talking or bribing his, his way back into the king's good graces. Chapter 8. We're going to read scripture. There's no commentary here. That very day, King al Hishverish gave the estate of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, to Esther, the queen. What he was to her. Okay, well, it, if we're going to jump over it, while the king had gone out to blow off his, uh, his steam, Haman was pushed down onto Esther's bed. And when uh, the king came back in, it looked like Haman was trying to abuse Esther in some way or another, which is the reason why the king decided to uh, make Haman a murder victim. Esther begs the king to avert Haman's decree. You're kidding. Okay, let's read this. That very day, King Ahasuerus gave the estate of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, to Esther the queen. Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told the king what he was to her. The king removed his signet ring, which he had taken away from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther put Mordecai in charge of Haman's estate. Esther yet again spoke to the king and she felt at and she fell at his feet and wept and implored him to avert the evil intention of Haman the Agite and his scheme that had plotted against the Jews. The king extended the gold scepter to Esther. Esther arose and stood before the king. She said, if it pleases the king, if I have found favor before him, the proposal seems proper before the king, and I be pleased in his eyes. Okay. For how can I bear wit? This is verse 6. For how can I bear witness the disaster which, God forbid, would befall the Jewish people? How can Esther herself bear to witness the extermination of, of her kindred? Kindred. We are now, um, permission is granted to override the decree on chapter 7, verse 7. The king al said to Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the, the, the Jew, 
Behold, I have given to Esther, and they have hung him on the gallows, because he sent his hand against the Jewish people. And you may write concerning the Jews whatever is favorable in your eyes in the name of the king and seal it with the king's signet for an edict which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet may not be revoked. And that's when that happened that they were able to take up swords and whatever to defend themselves against those who would attack them. Got to leave you something to read, right? <laughs> okay. Chapter 7. I'm going to read some. Uh, chapter 8. Commentary. The Holy One, blessed be he, now performed an unprecedented miracle. Was there ever in history such a miracle that Israel should wreak vengeance on the other nations and do with their enemies as they please, written in Midrash. Verse 11, chapter 7, commentary. Only... Only by organizing and underlying themselves in, in begging for God's assistance could a, a Jewish person be victorious, despite being seriously outnumbered. Verses 15 and 16 of chapter 8. These and these all these commentaries. The first one was from 8:8, and the second one was from 8:11, and we are now on 8. Verses 15 and 16, commentary. These are among the four verses said aloud in the synagogue by the congregation during the public reading of the Megillah. Okay, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have about 23 minutes left before my husband reads the Megillah in Hebrew. Commentary on verse 16, chapter 8. Rav Yehuda said, Light refers to Torah. Gladness refers to holiday. Joy refers to circumcision. Honor refers to tefillin. They were finally able to resume the study of Torah and without hindrance the performance of mitzvot from the Talmud. We are now in chapter 9. Then in the 12th month, which the, is the month of Adar, on its 13th day, huh, 13th, that's my birthday, is the 13th of March, the English birthday, when the king's command and edict were about to be enforced on the day that the enemies of the Jewish people expected to prevail over them, and it was turned about. The Jews prevailed over their adversaries. Verse 2, the Jews organized themselves in the cities and all the providences of King Ahasuerus to send forth their hand against those who sought to hurt them. So we are going now to chapter 9, verse 7, commentary. The ten sons of Haman, and which follows, should be said by one reading, the Megillah on Purim, in one breath, to indicate that they all died together, Talmud. Verse 9 of chapter 9, commentary. The letter Vav of Vayasa, Vayasa is enlarged in the Megillah like a long pole to indicate that they were all strung one underneath the other to one long pole, says Talmud. 
Verse 10, commentary of chapter 9. It was obviously most difficult to poor Jews, to poor Jews, uh, less fortunate financially, to restrain themselves from taking spoils. In reward for their restraint, it was established that throughout all generations, the poor, without exception, and investigation as to need will be the recipients of gifts to the poor and the reason the custom was made um, for them. And according to Allah, if a person has $200 or less, they are considered the poor. Okay. And so we're going down to chapter 9, verse 19, commentary. Oh, let's read verse 16 first, uh, scripture. The, Jew, the rest of the Jews that were in the king's providence assembled and defended themselves, uh, uh, gaining relief from their foes, slaying 75,000 of their enemies. But they did not lay their hand on the spoils. On the 13th day of the month of Adar, they gained relief on its 14th day, making it a day of feasting and gladness. Verse 18, but the Jews that were in Shushan assembled on both the 13th and the 14th day and gained relief on the 15th day, making it a day of feasting and gladness. And now we're reading commentary from verse 19. The law of Shushan Purim celebrating Purim on the 15th day of Adar in walled cities and comm commemorating of the victory in Shushan is not specifically stated in the Megillah. It is implied in verse 19 and 21 and so established by the rabbis. In verse 20 of the last chapter, Mordechai records these events and legislates annual commemoration. He writes the Megillah exactly as it appears in its present text today, sending delicacies to each other of foods, at least two delicacies, ready to eat foods to one person. The gifts to the poor, this means two gifts to two people, one gift to each of the two. The minimum number of the pl uh, plural word poor being two. And the Talmud we took this from. Okay, I think. Oh no, we still have another chapter here. Wow, I thought that was the end. Okay, chapter 9, verse 17. Confirmed and understood, they confirmed what they had under, undertaken long before Sinai, says the Talmud. Verse 28 of chapter 9. Even if the, the festivals should be annulled, Purim will never be annulled. Midrash, even after the holidays change, Purim will always be celebrated. And I imagine when Almighty God pays back all those from October 7th, that will be another day that will be decreed never to forget. Okay, we are now on chapter 9, verse 29. Commentary. Wrote the letter... In this word to enlarge to indicate that just as the so small I can't even see it. Okay. 
is the last letter of the alphabet. So in the story of, of Esther, the end of all the miracles to be included in the Torah, says the Talmud, Epilogue, Chapter 10. King Ahasuerus levied a tax on the mainland and the islands of the sea. All this is scripture now. All his mighty and powerful acts and the account of the greatness of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted, are recorded in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia. For Mordecai the Jew was viceroy to King Alheshverish, and he was a great man among the Jews, found favorable with the multitude of his brethren. He sought the good of his people and spoke for the welfare of his seed. Certainly sounds like President Trump, right? <laughs> okay. After the reading of the Megillah, and say amen with me on this, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who takes up our grievances, judge, judges our claim, avenges our wrong, who brings just retribution upon all enemies of our soul and exacts vengeance for us from our enemies and foes. Blessed are you, Baruch Atah Hashem, who enacts vengeance for his people, Israel, and for all foes, the God who brings salvation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Say Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to read the epilogue here. If I can. With the salvation of the Jews, affairs of state returning to normal under Mordecai, the empire grew stronger. And may that be what happens in the United States when Trump comes back. With the mention of the welfare, literally peace, and the picture of the statute and security of the Jews under Mordecai, the Megillah closes. The last verse of the Megillah is, a law, is among the four verses read aloud by the congregation during the reading of the Megillah in the synagogue. Among the, the reasons offered for this widespread custom are to polarize the miracles. These verses express the essence of the miracle throughout, uh, through the miracles through Mordechai, and to keep the children alert and prevent them from dozing off. That the kids shouldn't sleep because everybody repeating those verses. And the, the congregation recites the verses loudly as an expression of the joy of the day. The reader then repeals the verses because each verse must be read from the Megillah. Look at the timing. How much time we have left? 18, 19, 20, 12 minutes. So let's see what we can accomplish in 12 minutes. We are living in days that are very much like the book of Esther as far as the concern of our people in the land of Israel. Al Hashverus being all the enemies and the Kutis and and may God Almighty empower the Jewish people and their military to overcome all this evil in Israel and throughout the world now and forever and say Amen. Amen to the divine protection of all the people that are good hearted and know the Torah in this world whether they are Jew or righteous Gentile. May we all see God reveal himself to this world and overcome all the enemies. Akshav leolam va'ed. Now and forever say amen. May it be his will that just as Mordechai and Esther 
uh, were led and guided by the Almighty as to what they needed to do to overcome all. And instead of them being killed, the enemies were killed on the very implements, the gallows, in which uh, Haman had uh, constructed for Esther and Mordecai and the Jewish people, it, that, it boomeranged on them. Therefore, as my husband goes forth to read the Torah this afternoon in the original language Hebrew, he is reading from a Torah scroll of the book of Esther. Every time he reaches the name Haman, we're going to stamp our feet and we're going to say, Boo! And for those who have a grogger, do your thing, boy. We are going to boo out the Haman from the reading of the Megillah. So please participate with us. We're not in the same room per se, but uh, I hope some rabbis did some kind of um, decrees in the time of the COVID because people couldn't leave the house in order to do certain things that they had the dominion for. And so may those decrees uphold for the reading of the book of Esther right now. And um, may we all live a life where every day gets better and better than the day before, that every day we get healthier with the divine guidance from the Almighty as to what to eat and what supplements to take, knowing that the evil people in this world have tried to corrupt the food. Uh, God Almighty's power is still running this world, and he has power over everything. And so may it be his will. May it be his will to have a resolution to any and all difficulties in the path. We know that we are now at the end of Roman exile, uh, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 7 through 9. And we are in the uh, up and coming, the last war of Gog and Magog. The first two were World War One and Two, And the third one, we can uh, be protected from by eating the three meals of Shabbos, says the Torah. The, the Torah says that if we eat the three meals of Shabbos, we are protected from the fires of Gehenna. We are protected from the tribulations before the coming of Mashiach, which is right now. These things that are going on, like Biden being president, are tribulations before the coming of Mashiach. And we are protected from all of that. Um, I call it blue soda. BS, blue soda, yeah? And uh, the last but not final thing we are protected from is the last war of Gog and Magog. So keep eating those three meals of Shabbos, Friday night, Saturday at lunchtime, and Saturday before you go out of Shabbos. Now, uh, I've been told by my husband that uh, if a person is too full from the other meals, that they may do that, that second and third meal with um, mezzanot, which is like crackers or cakes or whatever. So you would make the bracha for the mezzanos, and then you would make the bracha for, with the after bracha, which is called a bracha krona in Hebrew which is the after meals grace for Mazoinos. So if you need help with any of these prayers or where to find them, uh, all prayer books should have them all, uh, <laughs> Jewish prayer books. And that way you're doing all three meals of Shabbos, therefore getting all the divine protection. Now the last war of Gog and Magog you can find in chapters 37 through 39 of Ezekiel. From chapter 40 through the end of the book of Ezekiel talks about the third and final temple, the layout of the temple, 
the things that will occur, the offerings that will be done in the third temple. And it even talks about uh, waters that will run under the temple in Yerushalayim. It talks about fruit trees that right now fruit trees, uh, they come and go every year. There is a time they, they blossom and a time they don't. But in the th when the time of the third and final temple occurs, we will have um, we will have the blossoming trees blossom all year long. Halal Hashem. That means you will have plenty of goodness. And when the final redemption comes in, which will be at the end of the third and final war of Gog and Magog, the final redemption brings the resurrection of the dead, which according to a Rashi commentary, King David will come back in the resurrection of the dead and he will be Mashiach ben David. Now, uh, at the time of the Geula or the redemption, there will all evil and death will be removed from this world according to Isaiah 25 and 26. And we will live in a year in a world of all goodness. We won't even have to work for a living because working for a living was commanded uh, on Adam and Eve because they ate from the tree. So all those things will be obliterated and God Almighty will treat us all like royalty and we will study Torah all day. Yay, I can't wait. Wait, and the more you study Torah, the more you get addicted to it. And it's one of the best addictions you could ever have in your life because addicting yourself to the Torah is a wonderful addiction. And it will make you grow spiritually. You'll get closer and closer to the Almighty. You'll go up the stairs okay, of spirituality. You ready? Okay. So my husband is now going to take over. I hope you enjoyed the class. Uh, don't go away because he's going to Read the Megillah in the original Hebrew scrolls. So, may God Almighty help me move this very gently. And may you all enjoy the reading of the Megillah today. Thank you, Hashem, for all your help with everything. Past, present, and future. Halal Hashem. Happy Purim, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I would like to try to read the Megillah for us. We do have to understand that you have to hear the Megillah. You need to move your chair and get closer to here when you're talking. Fine. You have to hear the Megillah with, uh, in person uh, with a proper Megillah scroll. I do have a proper Megillah scroll, which is handwritten on parchment. Uh, because we're dealing with electronic just, instruments, just say it's questionable. Because we're dealing with electronic instruments, we cannot actually strictly fulfill the mitzvah. But what we are doing is showing the Almighty that we're doing the very best that we can under difficult circumstances, and uh, the weather it has, it has contributed also in various ways to <laughs> make it difficult for people actually to able to hear the Megillah. To leave their home so we're doing the best we can and there will be three blessings that precede the reading the first one is blessing god for giving us the commandment through our rabbis our rabbis had declared that we should read the megillah the night of Purim and the day of Purim. and the second blessing is blessing the almighty who did miracles for us at that time uh, many many years ago, in those days at this time, God did many wonderful miracles for us in those days at this time. So this is not just an anniversary, it's a reenactment, actually a reenactment of the uh, miracle of Purim. And we need it reenacted literally in Israel right now with our wonderful soldiers who are giving up their lives and risking their lives to save the Jewish people. So it's very much like the story of Purim, uh, which the 
Amos and the other enemies <clears throat> tried to destroy us. They made an attempt and uh, were very, very proud of their, their horrible intentions. Just like Haman, Haman, Haman and Hamas, uh, same idea. And the Almighty should turn everything around upon them on their heads. He is already, in which uh, most of the Hamas uh, army has already been destroyed, but we need God's help to finish off. That's exactly what uh, Esther asked the king, Ahasuerus, to ask for an additional day, actually, the day after when we're celebrating Purim, to uh, eradicate a tremendous concentration of enemies in the capital city of Shusha. The third blessing, Shekhyano, which we bless the Almighty for keeping us alive and sustaining us, uh, and so that we were able to reach this time. We say the Shekhyano on holidays, as you know, when we do mitzvahs, various commandments that we aren't able to fulfill all year, they are at special times. So we bless the Almighty Shekhyano that he kept us in life uh, and sustained us, and we reached uh, this wonderful time. So that Shekh Yenu not only goes on this reading of the Megillah, which is on Purim once a year, two times, uh, the night of Purim and the day of Purim, but also we have the other commandments to fulfill today as well, which you can very easily. One of them is to give to another Jew, and it could be a relative, it could be your kids, it could be <clears throat> your spouse, uh, two kinds of food uh, that are ready to eat. It could be like one of those uh, Purim pastries called the hamatash, could be cookies, could be cake, and something else as well, another food as well, uh, with a different blessing. Could even be uh, a bottle of wine. They used to sell these very little bottles of wine for Purim as well. Or it could be another uh, food as well, a portion of meat that's ready to eat, a portion of, of chicken or fish that are ready to eat, just any other kind of food. Could be an apple and an orange too. Any other food that takes another blessing, you give that two food portions, two pieces of food to another Jew. That fulfills that and shows a wonderful friendship. Uh, it's wonderful to do this if you have Jewish neighbors. It's a beautiful thing to do. Tell them today's Purim, and this is the day that we exchange these food portion gifts. Also, set aside, if you have a charity box, you can use that as well. Set aside at least two coins to go to two needy individuals and you can make a check and give bills as well and that's the minimum to give two coins one to each and if there's an organization that uh, helps the poor in your community uh, you can do that as well set that money aside for them even if they're not available today by setting it aside which is my situation as well where i am by setting it aside you're fulfilling that commitment too so this shift you know that we're going to recite momentarily uh, where we bless God that we've He's kept us in life and sustained us to this time. That Sheikh Yonah not only goes for the reading of the Megillah, which we're about to do momentarily, but also for exchanging the food portions we, we mentioned, setting aside the coins, and yet a third mitzvah, which is to have a Purim feast, to have a wonderful dinner today, uh, while it's still daytime before sunset, which is very late now sunset, Anyway, so you'd be having it perhaps at, uh, you know, you could have it any time now after the Megillah, you could have it at any time where you are, uh, or later in the afternoon or early evening, but it should be begun at least uh, before sunset. Okay, we're going to recite the three blessings, and thank you for joining us. I'm going to have to go straight through once I start, so please understand I can't stop for comments uh, or to answer any questions. Normally we would have a wonderful lesson and we have had Purim lessons for the last few weeks. Uh, today I have to just do this. So excuse me one more second. I get one more gulp of water before I start this. Thank you. Okay, if you have the Book of Esther handy, that would be wonderful if you can follow along as best you can. Here again, we're doing what we the best that we can. <clears throat> Oh, I don't know. I 
Elohim melakolam, shiosu nisim lavosinu, by mimohim bizman hazeh. Baruch ato adonai, Elohim melakolam, shechiyano, vikimano, vikiyano, lazman hazeh. By he be me akash ve rosh, who akash ve rosh, shamalech me hudu be at kush, sheva be a stream of me or medina, by your meme, ho hem, kishevis, a melech akash ve rosh, all he say malakuso, I sheep, she shall not be wrong, Mishna shalosh, the molako, a summish tear, the cause of a babo dava hail, or as a mudakaya part to me him. Is the way Hamadino slip on over the Haro so go as O Shaki on Lacuso, the Eschia cohort, the Paris Kidulo so, Yamim Rabim, Shmonim, and me as Yom, of him lost, Hayamim, Oelech, or so Amelech, the Kolo Oman him to eat him, Bishu shall not be roll, and me go to who be a cut off, and Mister Shivas Yamim. Hakatsa <laughs> The ashes of your cadus, ain't no days, he again, he said, Hamelech, I'll call Rabbe so, Lassos, to zone each for each, Gam, Vashiam, I'll call, also, so, Mishtain, Ashim, Bay, some of whose are sheer, Lamelech, Akashri Rosh, by you, my shimmy, he, 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 the <laughs> I shall be yet as we see him. By itself, a melech me ode. Vacamoso, boa robo. By yomer a melech, laca comim, yo de ehoi team. He came to var a melech, left ne, co yo de e dos for dean. Viaco robe, a look of carson or she saw at Moses Sashish. Miris Marson of Mimukun. Shiva Surai, Parasumada, I rowe, Penea Mela, I use remission of Bamakus, Kedos Malas of us, Bamako, Vashi, Al Ashir, Lowas of Soho, is Mamara Melaka Kashri Rush, be at her service him. My Yome, Memoko, and let me a Melak be as a rim, Roella Melak Livado, Oversaw, Vashi Hamako. He alcohol has a rim of the alcohol. Who am I? My share. Behold, Medino Samelech Akashre Rush. He ate Sage Varhamako, a Kohano Shim. Loves us, Palahin, being a hen. Be a mook, a Mamelech Akashre Rush. A mook, Leo B. S. Vashi, a Makoko, Lip on the Boloba. By your mazet to so rose for us to die. I shall show you as Veramako, Leco, Sereha Melak, who could die be so young for God's sake. Ye Melak to go. Ye said Veramok. Ye said Veramokus, Melafonova, because he did us say for us to die, but lo ya vor. I shall lose of over she he left me a Melakakashri Rosh, whom I could saw it in a Melak. There was so hot to vomit men on Venishma Piscum, a Melacasu, yes, said the Pomaku so. Here a boy, he, there call on a sheep, him, yet know you call the valley hen. Let me go to all of the yard carton, white tub out of war, the Enea Melac, the Asurim of Ayasa Melac, 
Kidvar Mimukun, my Ishla, Sipurim, El Comedino, Samela, El Medino, Medino, Kesavaha, be ah, be el armable on Kilisho, no, Leos, Co Ish, Sureba, they saw, Omeda, her Kilisho, no, a carrot, will him away like Kisho, Kermas, Hamela, Kakas, Rosh. Zohar is Vashtibi, Isa Shiroz Soso, the East Asher Nigzar, Oleha, Vayomaruna Rea Melech, Meshorosova, Yevaka Shula Melech, Yeros Besulos, Tavos Marem, Yavkade Hamelech, Pekade, he him, Bechomidinos Makuso, Ekpitsu is Kona Rovasola, Tavos Mare, El Shushana Bira, El Bais and Ashim, El Yadig, Eris Hamelech, Shumer and Ashim, Benosun, and Tamruke Hen, Vihana Roho, Ashirti Tavabi, Neamela, Tim Lok, Takas Vashti, Paita Gavado Vogor, Vene Hamela, Payasakin, Ishihudi, Hoyo, Shushana Bira, Oshimo, Moraka, Hai Ben, Yotir, Ben Shim, Ehi, Ben Kish, Ishimini, Ashir Hogla, Mirusha, Lahim, Im. I go more, she hugged us all. Yeah, him, you can yum out your dog. I share her glow, and the book on it, so her melech for bell. My yum ain't as I does so. He is there, Buster Dog. He ain't the aim low of a boy aim. He and I roy if us to a real bit of us, Maria. Who will most of you be more like a go, Mordeca, I low the vast. By he be shamed for a milk with us, so whom he covets, your rose rebels, El Shushana Biro, El Yad Higoy, Vati Lakakas there, El Besa Melak, El Yad Higai, Shumir and Oshim, Vati Tom Hana Robin, Vati Sukhes and Lepanov, by my hail, as Tabruk Yavis, the cell losses law. Be ace, Sheva Hani arose for O Yosless is lovely, Bees and Melech, by a shanneho, Bees narrow seho, Lechova, Bees and Oshim, Lo he gido is there, Esam, Bees Molavito, Ye he moraka, I tibo oleho, a shillo sagid, Loko yom of a yom, Mordecai, Miss Ale, Lifne, at Sar Bees and Oshim, what does is shalom is there, Umaya seho. Hanoshim. <laughs> Who was there? And a robe or El Hamelach? Eh, it's called a sheer to my innocent love, my boy Imaha. Me base and a shim at base and melach. For where he a boar over book here. A shabo, a base and a shim shiny, El Yad Shash Gaz. Saris Hamelach, Shumir happy like shim. Los of a load of a melech, he he in Kapiz Boha melech, the negro of a shame. Uvagia tor ester, basavichayo, don't monocry a share. Look at lo, la bas, la bo, el a melech, lo big shot of work, he he. In a sashir, your mach, or he guys free some melech, shamir and a shim. But he is dead, or says, came being a coro eha. Vati Lakak, Esther, Elamelech, Akashvi Rosh, El Beis Malkuso, Bachorish Huasiri, Hu Kurish Tebe, Vishnas Sheva, the Malkuso, Vayahav, Amelech, Esther, Mikol Hanashim, Vati Sukhin, Vok, Esther, the Lipon of Mikol Abesulos, Vayas and Kesim Alkus, Perushah, Vayamlech, Takas Vashi. By yes, a melech, Miss Chegodol. Look also, Robert Babodov, ace, which they is there. Banaka, Lamedinos, or so, by Tamas ace, and Kiana Melech, who be Kovets Besulo, Shinis, Umurakayo Sheba, Beshara Melech, 
Ain Esther, my guy is more like a chubby as I'm a hawk as you hear. See, what all the Mordecai, yes, my man, Mordecai is there also. Yes, you hear. Oh, so be my not, yeah, too. Oh, you me, my hand, oh, Mordecai, you shiver be sure how Melak hurts up. Big son, what's sarish? Shne, shri, see how Melak me shumri has up. I back shul, shloak yod. I'm Melak, a cash me rose. By your bada had a ball of Mordecai, by your giddy is there, Hamako. But you be Mr. Here, Lamela, the she Mordecai, by your cash and a ball, by you must say, by your toulouse, Nahem, all eight, by your cause, he would be safer. Every high on me, him, lift Naham, Melech, Aker, had more rim, who are I'm a like a cash very rush, it's Homon. Ben Hamdo, so who I go give, by you not say who, by your simis kiso, me ya, I'll call out to me, my shiri toe. Bekal a day, I'm a like a share, Beshara Melech, Korim, Mushakadim, Lehamon. Ye, ye, can't see below, I'm a like, oh, Moraka, I low ye cra, low ye sakadem. By your maru of the Amelech, I should be sure of the Murakoi, my dua at your over ace, Miss Vasa Melech. By he, 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 on Rome, love you, my boy, on Velosha, my Alehem, by a giro, lay her mohon. The rose I am due to free Murakai, he, he, giro him, I should who you who be, by your harmon. He ain't more a kite, career, who may shake a bit low by him a lake. Come on, oh, hey, moon, by ye, as the enough of Lishno at your door, the Kyle of Ado. He he, get a lois, I'm a mordecai, by a vacation, oh, let us mid is call a higher hoodie, he must shake here. Oh, <laughs> Melech, Akash, we rush. Yes, no, I'm a good. Mephu's door, whom a poor road be, who am me, me be called, me be no smart and seca. Better to say, ham, show no, me colo, hum, be as just say a melech, no more seem. Bella melech ain't show bell, honey, hum, ye mala melech tova, ye can say, we are the dumb. But there is a low fim, kick a kiss, a fish call, all your day, or say, hamilocha, loha be, I'll give say, hamelech. Why you, Sarah Melech, is to have a tummy, all you know, why it no, Lehamon. Boo! Binam Hamdo, so who I got ye, so rear how you would him. Why you, Maha Melech, Lehamon. Boo! I guess if no soon luck, be her uncle, my soul's boat, I took a bean echo. By a girl, so pray, Hamelech, back or a show, we shall be so sure, or so you're home. Oh, by a girl, save the color, she had saved a home. Oh, he'll ash, akash, tarpene, and melech, the lapacos, and sheer, amedino, amedino, the osore, amba, am, medino, medino, kicks of her. The Amber Arm, those shall know the shame of Melech, a Kashirosh Nichtober, and that town bit of us and Melech. Finish Lord, sit for me, and maybe at her road, say him. I'll call me the Nos Hamelech, Lash Mid, my rogue, will you be? It's called High Hoodim, Minervia Zokin, Top, and a shimmy be on my good. The Ishlo Show also, or the Kurdish Shinim also, who Kurdish adore. Ushalom, Lobos, a shaken hack so over. Lay nuts and dust before Medina, Medina, go Louis, the Kalhuamim, the Yos Asidim, the Yomazer, or what's him? Yotsa Utahufim, 
Bifar HaMelech V'yadras Nitno V'shushan Avira V'yamelech V'yaman Yashivu L'shus V'yahu Yer Shushan Nahuvohan Momonica, <laughs> Ave <laughs> no by Chummer Esther, last of my Tatsabeho, Mordecai, who loved day and Melech, be a hum, many knows and Melech, but he him. I share Kol Ish Visha, I share Yavo Ella Melech, Elech, what Seraphine means, I share Loi Kurri, Achas to Solo Miss, Leva, me a share, you should Loa Melech, yes, Sharbita Zohar, Vicko Yo. Yamor <laughs> Bye, <laughs> 
my crawlerfan of a coco, your silver inch, and sheer hamelach, for face be coroa, by your shab monachai, el sheramelach, be harmon. Boo! If Kafel be so, or be a bakapui rosh, by a sapir, by a sapir, harmon, a lazarish is to uko, who above east called a sheer corohu. I have a melech behemon. Least chose. Behemon, least chose him, Mr. Hamaka. By yo, me, Hamelech, yes, dear gum. By yo, my she need the Mishti Hayayan. My Sheila say, hey, Mr. Hamaka, be nuss and look, the sea nuss and look, whom I could say, I could see him of course, we see us. By time, Mr. Hamaka, by tomorrow. Im motzasi chin binecha hamelach the im ala melach tova tinas and lena she b'shilosi v'ami the bakoshosi ki nim karnu ani v'ami la shmid la rogli abed v'iru la vadim b'lish v'kos nim karnu hekarashti ki ina so hor shove v'nezik hamelach. By yomer hamelach akash v'rosh by yomer liyister hamaka. Me who's there? Who's there? Who? I shame the only bowl. I shall stain. But tell me, is there? Aish, sir, be o ye, come on. Oh, boo, boo. A rose, eh? Be home on, nibbles. Melephi, a melephi, a maca. Be a mele, come back up. So many stay high in. Alginas, happy son. Be hamon amahad. The vacation I show me is ter hamaka kira o ichalso ilo hora o mi isamelech. Be amelech shov miginas habisan el beis mishtei hayayin. Be hamon nafehel alamito alamito ishir still lecha by yom hamelech. Agam lech bo shisamako imi baboyis adamu ho yotam ti hamela kufne homon kofu bayom echarbona echad binasarisim lepne hamela kam hine hoes ashiroso amon. The Barakai, a sheer debate of Alamela, who made the day so mon, go go up and shima mon, by Yomahamela, to who I love, by a slow as a mon, all who is a sheer he can no more hoy, Bakamasamela, a shock, by Yomahu, who no son, a Melakakas be rushly, Stehamako, his day so mon, to rear Hayudim. Oh, Mordecai, I bought the Hamelach, he get a steer, Mohu Lohan. By your sir, Hamel, by your sir, Hamelach is Tabato. I shear him beer, may Homan. Oh, wait, no, the Mordecai, but tell us him is to hear his Mordecai, a base Homan. But Joseph is to hear, but to the beer, the Hamelach, but he pulled the Nera glove, but he. That is gun in love. La Havir is through us, one who I could give. Yes, my Kashel to who I shear for Shev Al Hayudim. By Yoshida Melak, we are steer east. Shavita Zahov, by Toka Mister, by Tamun, Naya Melak, by Chomir, Yamala Melak, Tob, Vima Motso, Sikina, Lepono, Vikashi, I do all of Naya Melak. Vito vo ani binov, he can say, Will your sheep is as if for me him. Makashe, have a shaman. Oh, 
Hama and Ben and Dosa who are going to I share because the lovely Abed is Hayahudim. I share because the Lord is the Lord. I share because the Lord is the Lord. I share because the Lord by Yomer, Hamelaka Akashri Roshni, Stehamako, Ulu Mordechai, Hayudi, he named his Homan. Oh, Nasati, Lias, Tehev, your soul to Lu Alu eats, Ah, Al Ashir Sholach, your do, by Yudim, Viatem, Kisbu, Al Hayudim, Katal Binikim, the Shima Melach, Viakismu, but the Basa Melach. Kikis <laughs> This is Ramadi Nos, a share me who to be a kush. Sheva, me a simum, me a medino, 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 kets of a hot, the yamba on Kushano, the El Hayodi, him kets of one of the Kushanum, by a toh of a shame, a melaka kashri rosh, by a tomb, the Tabas and Melech, by a shlak, by a shlak, the for him, the yard, horrid him, but so see him roughly, a rakish, wakish on him, Bene, who ram of him. Ashir no son, a melech like who deem. Ashir before the evil we hear, Lake or her hill. Labor al Nashuham, Lash me, La Rogolia paint, La Rogolia paint, is called Kilaham, Umedina. At Surimo, some tap at the Nashim, Ushlam, Lobos, be your mechor, the comedy no, some melech a cash for roast. Yeshua Shosu, or the Kurdish Shimasu, who Kurdish adore, passes Shagan Haksa, Lenas and Despokum, not Medina, Gurloy, the Kulhuamim, but the Hios Ayudi Masidim, the Yomaze, the Hina King, the Yoivan, Haratse, him, Rocky, or Rakish, Wakashronim, Yatsu, who before Limo to Kupim, the Barama, he had just it now, Bishop Shana Beron. Oh, my God, you're so militant, I'm mad. Bill Bush, my cousin, the Hillis Bokur, but there is a hobby, get a love, a sacred boot, the argument, who are your sure show, hon, to a love, a son, make up. Lie, who deem, who is so rough, this is called business of the car, of a comedy, no, of a dean, no, of a cold ear, but ear, me come, I shared where I'm out with us, oh, my dear, sim club is so soon. Layahudim, Mishkev, Yom Tov, Rabim, Mea Mea, or it's Missyadim, King of Paul Pocket, Hayudim, all I am. Polish name, also, Kodesh, Kodesh, Adur, Fishlo Show, also Yom Bob, Asher Higay, Adwar, and Mel, that was so, well, he also, by Yom, I see a Sibru, I be Hayudim, and slow for him. When I poke who I share your slit too, how you dee him, him of the sonny him, Nicolo, how you dee him, and be your him. The comedy knows the Malacca Kashri Rosh, the Shloak you are dim about Shirosum, be each of my fifty him, be each of my lifting him, you know, Papa Hadoham, I go on him, because I am a dinos, be a shepherd in him, be a back loss, be a same of what she'll not, when I see Miss Hadi who him. Come on, 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 come on,
Hafurim, away the Bismanim, Kashiki, Amalayim, with Hai Hayudi, Vistir, Hamako, the Kashiki, Buanashan, the Ozaram, the Brayatomos, the Zarkosam, who Mamaris, their Kinyam, the Brayapurim, who Elev and Ektavu, Basapir, Bayos, and Hamalak, Akashri Rushmas, all the Orts, the Yehayam, Verkoma say so pope for so for a shask, last Mordecai, she get low, Hamela, Alohim, Kesubi, him, all say fair, the Ray Hayomi, him, the Malchim would die over us. Kay, Mordecai, Hayudi, Mishnella, Malaka, Kashi Rosh, Vega do, I who deem, Vero Tui, the Rogak of a Dorish Tovaliamo. David, <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us for the Megillah reading, and have a wonderful, joyous Purim. Please don't forget the other commandments to fulfill today, including the sharing of food portions, as we mentioned earlier, giving uh, at least one coin to each of two needy people, but setting it aside for when you can. Give them the coin and a check. It can be in an envelope to avoid embarrassment of any sort as well. And don't forget also the Su'udas Purim, uh, the Purim feast. And we recite the prayer of Anisim in the grace afternoon. Okay. Okay. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Happy Purim. May it be only goodness now and forever. May Hashem Almighty God. Bless us all and keep us and make a space to shine upon us and keep us in perfect peace now and forever. Only goodness. Please, God. Sorry, what's going on with this thing? Okay, you're going to behave? Yes, you behave. No, no, it's too low. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to move the camera for my husband to be able to get into the screen while he's still standing. And I'll have to work with that after. Anyway, happy Purim, everybody. We'll be back again. What is today? Today is Sunday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, New York time would be 8.30. So adjust yours to whatever time um, would be for yours. And we'll be back again. Tomorrow is a basic Torah class. Tuesday will be Parshan Haftorah again, and my husband will join me on Tuesday. Anyway, uh, we wish you brachat slacha v'simcha, only goodness, now and forever. Zay Shalom, shalom.